Uh, today I'm talking about CloudWatch dashboards and custom Drupal metrics. I'm a uh, sysops engineer from previous Next. I've been working in the SD community for roughly 10 years and uh, working at previous Next, I manage and develop our Skipper platform. Today I want to discuss what uh, metrics are, how they're useful and what we do with them uh, in the context of Drupal. So part one, uh, metrics are essentially a single piece of information in a numerical format which we can uh, collect together and aggregate over time to uh, present graphs um, and be able to extract information from those graphs. Um, typically, you'd understand them to be something like Google Analytics, where they have a piece of metadata behind them known as dimensions, and um, they describe a, a fact at a point in time. So the importance is that at this point in time, this information was accurate. Um, why we collect it is um, the picture they describe when we collect them together can tell a, a, a story, and we can use that information to drive uh, stakeholder investment in a decision or a, a plan that we're proposing to accomplish. And the information, uh, information is, uh, it holds value when it's true. So we want to bake integrity into our pipeline, making sure that it's as automated as possible and um, not handled by as many external processes as possible. So keeping it on your platform to automate the process. An AWS metric is uh, a little bit similar than what we'll deal with shortly, but this is what a AWS metric looks like. It's a, um, a JSON object, very flat except for our metadata. Here we have a, a name, a type, and uh, labels with a value. The most important thing here is our name and value. So we can say, this is our metric name, this is what the value was at the time, and we use our dimensions later. In this case, it's a web form bundle, and that will be uh, how we filter the information down the track. The benefits of um, using metrics would be to be able to tell a picture. So if you had your core and module versions at a certain value at a point in time, you could theoretically down the line, if you needed the information to identify if you were exploited for some reason, if you needed the information for key stakeholders, you could access the information and you could identify when those values changed. So exactly when your core updated, when your modules updated, you would have that information on hand and you wouldn't have to go digging through logs or git history, and that sort of thing. Um, we can also identify other metrics. So if you had how many nodes of a certain type, how many web forms were submitted, and um, we're going to pull some metrics out of logs later. So if you had your Drupal's watchdog identifying a certain piece of information, you can query against it, find out how many of the responses were at the time, and make a graph around that. So you can tell a picture. The benefits to uh, understanding your application would be uh, understanding how many comments, where the comments were going, uh, web forms were being submitted to, ideally just trends, uh, useful information around um, numerical, numerical information. Uh, we also have <clears throat> health and security benefits of metrics, so being able to identify when users were unblocked or blocked, being able to understand the flood table size, web form uh, table sizes, so you might have a privacy reason for wanting to get rid of information at a given date, or um, even the cache table sizes, which do have some security impacts. It's a good chance to plug here. Uh, my colleague Nick Shu will be speaking about uh, Drupal security from tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Um, 
getting started, uh, starting with metrics would be understanding what what picture you want to describe, uh, what information is useful to you, and working from that. Uh, so identifying the information you want to find, working out how to extract it, and exposing it in some way, which we will get. If you have a lot of metrics, uh, obviously you've got to manage them in a, a simple, concise way that's got little overhead. And that's where we come to Drupal. Uh, open metrics, rather. Open metrics is a open source standard for managing metrics at scale. It's designed for low latency and it can be implemented with text and protocol buffers for a deeper application integration. And typically what we would look at for observability or open metrics is a Prometheus instance or it's a essentially a storage area where you have your Drupal endpoints, which basically just get scraped by that Prometheus. And users typically use a UI just to query against that store to find the information or to build the graphs around that. And ideally you'd, you'd get that in managed services such as Grafana. Um, and yeah, Openmetrics is a, a Standard supported by the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And yeah, that brings us to Drupal. So what we want to do here is enable metrics collections in Drupal. What other options we have, uh, what metrics are available with uh, what I'm offering here, and um, what compatibility in Drupal looks like. like. From a technical standpoint, what does compatibility look like? So we have a Drupal module, Previous Next developed to implement the uh, open metric standard. And it provides revisioning content, user and node metrics, as well as uh, module versions, core versions, PHP versions, and queue sizes. Um, what it does, it takes your website, allows you to uh, add these optionally, so you don't have to add them all at once. And it allows you to provide a token to your endpoints so that you're not uh, having to expo expose this information publicly, which is important. Uh, we also have a community module, the uh, bonus pack, which implements uh, support for advanced queue and table sizes. Very useful because of cache table sizes, web form sizes, uh, any application specific. A table which you might need to cut down or keep as minimal as possible for whatever reason, performance, uh, privacy, it's an option to go down. We also uh, wanted to look at the implementation. So ideally, uh, well, we have a endpoint at slash metrics which provides a text version of a open metrics document. This is served by your web server and not the application. So you don't want to have any impact on your application of load at the time. And it essentially serves a compatible document. So you can either do this in a templating format or through protocol buffers, which basically render it for you through a framework. Uh, now we come to AWS, where we're getting the information from Drupal and we're adding it to the platform itself. Uh, we want to go through where information can be found, what you can do with the information. Um, I want to take you through building a metric based on log filter queries, uh, which are AWS construct, and what we do with the information afterwards. So getting, uh, here's our typical standard. So we would have our SAS offering or a open metrics implementation, which takes information from Drupal and puts it in store, which we explored earlier. But what we wanted to do with AWS was to have a scraper in the middle where we could send the information to our destination using a implementation of our choosing. We can do this using uh, just a compiled binary in Kubernetes, uh, Docker, or even Lambda, which are very simple to develop. And uh, 
this information basically gets transformed by Lambda in the open metric standard, converted into the AWS standard and sent to the uh, account. Um, our dashboard information will come from three sources. We have uh, our logs, our metrics, and a, a development cycle, so everything else. Uh, talking about logs, there's a lot of useful information in logs. So they provide the ability to analyze information historically, to investigate, and um, it's very good for security and compliance. However, we can also build metrics around this and by extracting information from Drush as an example, we can filter down individual pieces of information that we're interested in. We could take this information to our stakeholders, to our managers. We could say, here's a bunch of information. We can't lie about this. What do we do about it? Or you can produce a plan and say, here's what I want to do. Here's the information to back up my, uh, my assessment. Do you agree? What do you want to change? So log filter metrics are basically metrics created from log groups or log queries. So you would go into your log group, choose a stream that would have reproducible information that you want to find. You create a metric from that information add to your dashboard from there. An example of um, what a custom metric graph would look like would be something like this is a web form submission table row count. So we would go in and count our web form, how many submissions are made over how far. And from this graph, we can observe that information has been regularly purged, but not frequently enough. So it's probably going to become a maintenance task at some point in the future. Uh, this has obvious impacts such as privacy, CPU utilization, dealing with your database. So it's definitely useful information to have on hand. We can represent this information in other formats, such as um, pie graphs and tables. This provides generic um, information in a simplified format. And anyone of any technical capacity can understand this information without having to dive into something outside of their comfort zone. Uh, automated metrics, so this would be where your lambda comes in or some sort of automated pipeline where you can guarantee the information is coming from a reliable source. You're not having to get a person, a developer involved so that you know the information is coming from a reliable source and you know it's coming in regular. Uh, for this, uh, your metrics are already on the platform. so you basically have to run a query against those, and we will see that in our example. Once we've finished creating metrics, we can also attach alerts, alarms to them. So if you wanted to be alerted to a situation, or if you wanted to not be notified if a certain amount of something has come through, you have the option of doing that. An example of um, useful information would be coming from purge requests from your CDN. So it's a a very common circumstance where a content editor has pushed content or deleted something and for some reason the content has been updated. So here we can graph out the uh, purge requests that are made to the CDN. We can identify if information is missing, inaccurate or excessive because um, typically these have a cost factor to them. You can identify if you're making too many purge requests or if there's information that's playing out missing because uh, there are service request limitations which might expose some information for you. It's uh, kind of useful. If you're interested in this, uh, Kim, my colleague, is doing a talk on how COVID scaled through the pandemic and on our websites. And that's happening after lunch tomorrow at 1.20. Um, so not so automated ways, this is more catered towards a development cycle. So if you're developing a, a Lambda or developing a process to get your metrics from Drupal into uh, your platform, or unideally, you could be running this on CI on a less frequent cadence. So 
what we want to do is get away from the low uh, height. Yeah, the daily pipelines. We want this to be a regular thing because we we know it's coming from a reliable source. We know there's no middle person, and we know there's no people involved in the process. Get rid of operational costs. So for this example. I will be showing you some information based on real, uh, it is real data, in fact, and it's coming from a log filter query, a log filter metric. So to start our dashboard, we want to give it a name. We want to use a pattern in this naming convention. Uh, we don't want this to be a single thing. If you can, make it a reusable pattern, like a token where you have your application name, you have its purpose. And in our example, this will be my app slash Drupal, because you may have other metrics of interest before your application. And you may want to scale this out to other applications that you manage. So here we can see a log filter metric creation form. We're running a query against a log group, and uh, we're giving it a, a designation of where it's going to live in the platform, which is our namespace. It will exist under our namespace with our metric name, and from there you'll find it with its dimension, which are things we use to filter it down. Um, when a lock metric filter is created, it will return a value, which is our metric value, and this will represent one piece of information that was returned from that query. And the default value is optional. You can either have missing information or you can give it a value. Uh, in this case, we're going to set to zero, which uh, seems a little sensible. So once we've created our uh, information, is there's nothing there. And that's because the information hasn't yet been collected. So our, I forgot to <coughs> mention our query is searching for catchper responses with a low score. This could uh, indicate bots. It could indicate people that haven't filled out the CatchPur submission successfully. And um, this information is found in our watchdog. If we proceed forward, we have our query builder, which will show you how to find this information once it has been made as a metric. We have our namespace, which is a directory-like structure of where it's found. We have our metric name, which is uh, aggregated by a uh, Excel-like arithmetic here. We have a sum, so we, we're going to add all of them up over the given time frame that we're going to specify. And uh, we could use averages or something similar as an alternative here. We also have our filters, so if we had dimensions to work with, we could say, for this application, for this piece of metadata, find this information. And here we have uh, roughly 24 hours after this was created. Uh, we have some submissions here, or some lack of submissions. And we can see we have some high points. Uh, what we can do with this later is create a alarm around this. So if we wanted to be notified of a situation, or if a metric exceeded or is less than, a certain value, we could uh, implement this and be aware of the situation that's happening uh, almost immediately. Uh, adding it to your dashboard is as simply as clicking on actions and go add to dashboard. It's a very straightforward process once the information is available. An example of what your dashboard could look like is uh, on the board. Uh, Dashboards can be exported as JSON. They can be very reusable. And uh, we'll get to how that could be useful in a sec. But you can use a lot of uh, patterns to formulate these, to codify these. And so bring it home. We have uh, all of our information in Drupal. We have it being moved onto the AWS platform. And we have a graphical representation of it. So we, we need to identify what happens next. And that would be analyzing and understanding. Are there, are there spikes? Are they malicious? Do you know where they're coming from? These are all questions. What answer? 
followed by what happens when there's a situation I don't want, what happens next. And knowing who to contact is a, a very key question you need to ask. And obviously that person needs to know what happens, so they would have a run sheet associated with the uh, alert. Uh, next, you would need to codify your dashboards if you plan to scale out. You can use technologies such as Terraform, CDN, uh, CDK, or uh, CloudFormation as examples. Ways to do this. The information is stored as JSON, so it is um, very scalable in that way. Uh, takeaways. If nothing else, I'd like you to walk away from this talk understanding what a metric is and how it's useful, how it can provide you with the power to go to your stakeholders and say, here is a situation. Can we do something about it? Do we do something about it? What comes next? Drupal is a fantastic opportunity to provide extra information the platform would not otherwise know about. From outside, you have a set amount of information, system resources, logs, etc. But how, you, how do you take that information to something more tangible in your work? That is really what I want you to take away. Um, now open to questions. We are hiring, so feel free. Thank you. Yes, the information comes from there and is collected at a point in time. The graph comes from presenting the information as an aggregate over time. So you choose, I want this week's information, Monday to Friday, and you would see that graph represented over that time. No, that's part of the AWS platform. So once the information comes from Drupal onto the platform, you would then create your dashboards from the information on the platform. That would graph information over the, the time parameters. But each of those data points represents one point in time, one piece of information, and that's where you would see that. The, uh, the metrics themselves are both Prometheus and AWS. Your service provider or hosting provider would uh, have access to metrics. Whether or not they let you see that information is another thing. But this is the context of Drupal and AWS. I've got a couple of questions. One was, the Prometheus module, Yes. How, does it, how does it decide what's Yes. And the second question was provide. So the Drupal module exposes a series of Drupal specific metrics. So things you would extract from Drupal that the platform wouldn't know about does come from the implementation we've got, and it does provide a, a couple of choices. So you go into your modules configuration, you choose which metrics you want to expose, but if you would want to extend on that, you have to uh, obviously write your own for the application itself. And that's uh, an example of that is the bonus show. But you don't have to have metrics from Drupal from that way, but if you wanted a deeper integration, but information only Drupal knows about. That's where that would play. Am I right in thinking the resulting log stream snapshot? A log stream is a subset of your logs. So a log group will only get, uh, a log stream will only get so big before it moves on to the next stream but it's all contained in log group. Where you would run your query against your log stream is basically a size, I think it's 50 log entries. 
you basically want to determine what you want to find and that would provide you an opportunity to evaluate if uh, your query is going to come back. Struggling to understand where Prometheus is separate to AWS completely. So you it's, it's the same standard, yeah. And we're using that standard to pull in metrics from Drupal into the AWS platform. Right. Uh, um, this wasn't particularly a numbers uh, presentation, but I would strongly recommend Kim's presentation tomorrow where he talks about how we go through the pandemic. There's a lot of uh, useful metrics to come out of that. All right, now I was just wondering, like, when should I use this? Should I use this for large? It depends what information you want to extract. It's entirely up to you. But if you want to have this information on hand, if you need to present all this information at some point in time, it's a good but uh, it becomes more valuable with more information. So bigger sites, the value is um, it increases over time. Yes. The way that you guys, yep. the range? The bigger the site, the more interesting and valuable the information. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We are essentially using AWS exclusively, and this was the option provided to us. We had the option of choosing um, open source standard to implement uh, what the Drupal side of it, but AWS strictly was our because that's how we operate. Nothing that I can think of. Can I relate your... Is there a reason strategy is better or...? My experience with data, uh, I would say the open source standard is like, uh, you know the standard, you know it's, you know it's flat and reliable. Uh, the open source standard is the best because you know what you're getting. Um, everything I've done in the past has always been complicated for one reason or another. But here, you, you know your data structure. You know it inside out and you use that to your... Uh, clients with dedicated clusters have access to information. Uh, I haven't yet found that. <laughs> well, thank you all for your time. <laughs>